So my friend Charles died last year on All Saints Day. And oftentimes we think of the saints of the church kind of like the church's hall of fame. And we see them in stained glass windows, and we see them in statues. And for Charles, if you knew him, you could not imagine him in a stained glass window, window or as a statue. He would, either, he would either have thought that that was just an appalling thing or a really wicked joke. And he was a thoroughgoing Protestant, so he believed that all of God's people are saints. But it made me think about an old, way, way back in the early days of the church, a bishop and theologian who said this, the glory of God is a human being who is fully alive. The glory of God is a human being who is fully alive. And Charles was that kind of person. He was a fully alive kind of person. And you know, when we encounter people like that, it's interesting, isn't it? Rather than just sort of being on a pedestal and somehow sucking all the air out of the room and making the attention only be all about them as if none of the rest of us could be anything like that, people who are fully alive seem to spark in us being more fully alive. And it doesn't become about them. It becomes about the life in them that's, that engenders the life in us. And there's one more thing that happens when we have that going on is we realize that we're all in this together. That the life is a shared life. People like that, uh, I, I hear an echo in the scriptures today that we heard from the first reading. They're like sparks running through the stubble. What a great image, sparks running through the stubble. They bring light, they bring warmth, and sometimes they set some holy fires. This is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So if we ask the question, what exactly does the Holy Spirit do to help us become more fully alive, I don't think it's anywhere stated better than in a prayer that we're, just, we're going to hear in just a few minutes. When we recognize in baptism that the Holy Spirit is given to us as a gift. And in that we pray that those who are being baptized, that they will be given, they will be given a spirit, let me make sure I get it right. That they will be given an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere a spirit to know and to love God and the gift of joy and wonder in all God's works. Now our baptisms today are children. And whenever children are baptized, I can't help but think about what are, what are their lives going to be like? What are they going to have to face over the next 10, 20, 50, 60, hopefully 90 years or more? I'll tell you this, if they're going to be fully alive during that time, these are exactly the things that they need more than anything else. an inquiring and discerning heart. The courage to will and to persevere. A spirit to know and to love God. 
and the gift of joy and wonder in all God's works. Well, that's our prayer for them today. But may that prayer also be rekindled in every one of our hearts.